Dana, who worked with Bell Aquaculture and Norman. It's a great group, very visionary. Um, and we've been working to develop environmentally friendly fish farming and land-based closed containment systems, which is another word for water recirculating systems, for almost two decades. And technology has come a whole long way. Please, next slide. So I work for the Conservation Fund, we're a national nonprofit organization that protects land and water resources across America. In the last 25 years, we've protected over 7 million acres of uh, habitat, working forest farms, and other areas. But at the fresh, next slide, please. At the Freshwater Institute, we're a subdivision of the Conservation Fund, and we want to protect our water resources. The United States is fortunate to have had good water resource protection, um, unlike most other parts of the world. Next slide, please. So how does this tie into seafood and aquaculture? Well, there's a couple ironies I'll get to, but seafood is now predominantly supplied by aquaculture. It's over 50% worldwide. And if you go to the grocery store because you want to have a meal, high protein, healthy omega-3 fatty acids, you can buy salmon, shrimp, trout, catfish, tilapia. That's all fish farm. And in the US, 85% of our seafood is imported. And this is the irony. I live next to Chesapeake Bay, <coughs> south of New England, and along the Great Lakes here, seafood was king. That's how we developed our country with harvesting the oceans. And we can't do that anymore because we've over-harvested. And uh, the other irony is that the United States is the world's best farming country. We have the best row crops, we have the best terrestrial animal. 80 billion pounds a year of cattle produced, hogs and poultry, live weight, 80 billion pounds to feed the world. And also in fish, we're less than one billion pounds. So we're less than 1% in fish. And there's a lot of reasons why, but I think one of the reasons why is the United States has valued our water resources and fish grow in the water. And we haven't allowed fish farms to rape the landscape and destroy the water resources like they do elsewhere in the world. <clears throat> Next slide, please. So we're really resource constrained in the United States. Aquaculture plays a small role in agriculture. It's a growing. It used to be the largest, fastest growing sector of agriculture. Uh, because we have limited water supplies, we can't just go find places to raise fish that have the right water temperature and the quantity of water. Uh, we have nutritionists here because they're working on ways to avoid our limited marine oil and fish meal supplies so we can have more sustainable supplies of fish food. And then our pollution on the, on the environment. So it's also important to separate the fish from the wild. Farm can't interact with the wild because the, we'll breed with them and dilute the germplasm, especially with Atlantic salmon in places like Norway, and transmissions of disease. Next slide. So we've been working on containment systems for sustainable aquaculture uh, that protect the environment and also the wholesomeness of the fish. So our fish aren't growing in the Gulf of Mexico during an oil spill. Uh, our fish are feeding controlled ingredients. Our fish uh, don't have obligate pathogens, so we don't have to treat with antibiotics, pesticides, chemotherapeutics. Uh, it's a very healthy product. These are 10 to 12 pound Atlantic salmon that we produced this last year, 2011, while we produced about 13 tons during uh, our research. Next slide, please. So we really have insufficient water resources for flow through. This is a picture of a farm in Idaho uh, that uses raceways. And they're diverting a monstrous spring the size of a small river through that facility. They're flushing waste away with dilution. So it captures very little waste. It flushes it through the environment. Uh, and we can produce, in, in the facility you saw with Bell Aquaculture, we can produce fish on less than 1% of the flow that would be required in this kind of situation. And we have better environmental control because we're setting the temperature where we want to and we're keeping out pathogens. Next slide. So really what we're looking at are giant water treatment facilities. If you saw it, I'm a chemical engineer. I work with other engineers and biologists and vets. But it's a giant water treatment facility where we have to take the water to provide oxygen for the fish, to carry the waste away, and then remove those wastes from the water so it can be returned to the fish and be healthy. And we can actually now close the system down so we're not using any water except to flush the solids and the water can stay crystal clear blue because we, we know how the water treatment works. Next slide. <clears throat> so it, this is critical, especially with the salmon issue. You probably read in the paper that all of the people that are contentious with wild salmon 
versus farm salmon and how farm salmon are raised. But with closed containment systems, we prevent escapes. We don't have disease coming in or out because we have a, a barrier. And then they don't have the interaction between the wild and the farm fish because the farm fish can't escape to get to the wild. We can move these farms away from sensitive marine environments and close to the market so this farm can sit right outside of Washington, D.C. Or, or Indianapolis. And even locate farms where the power is cheap. Uh, we, Bell Aquaculture and other sites are near six cents a kilowatt hour. We have other sites in the U.S. with two cents a kilowatt hour. So uh, we have ideal site selection because we've decoupled the fish farm from the environment. We don't need the water resource. We can do it anywhere. Next slide. <coughs> and then I'll, I'll, I've hit this over and over, but without pathogens getting in, for, tw for 10 years at the Freshwater Institute, we've produced 200 tons of fish during research. We've never used vaccines, pesticides, antibiotics, or chemotherapeutics. Consumers don't want that in their fish. It's expensive to add it to their fit, to treat the fish. You have high mortality when you have the diseases. So <coughs> if you contain the system so you don't have obligate pathogens, you can prevent that. Next slide. And then we capture the manure, and we can use the nutrients and recycle them for hydroponics, for pasture, for uh, compost, and all of that's part of the <coughs> aquaculture. The aquaculture is going to reclaim the solids. Uh, the nitrogen phosphate solids can go to either compost or selling to the farmers nearby. There's even talk of hydroponics. Next slide. So this is what you saw today. You saw three of those eight systems. Uh, if fully built out, it's about 1,000 tons per year. And it's really an agribusiness. Commercial scale, so you can be competitive with the uh, other industries producing fish, is an agribusiness. It's not the small mom and pa. Uh, but it gives you more competitive economics. Do you see the infrastructure that Bell has to have in place to have perch out of your season spawning, and then to have culture of the fry indoors, and then uh, the grow out and the processing? It's uh, putting it all together is what makes it work. Next slide. And this is what you saw today. What you didn't see, this is how we harvest the perch uh, with the crap clamshell crowder grater and they slide out of the tank. We did this at Freshwater Institute with their perch and one grow out cycle. And it's a very simple way to manage the fish and uh, has a nice product when it's harvested. Next slide. But in the United States, there's other examples of very nice close containment facilities. One of the first ones built that's been successful uh, now as Australis is, is a Barramundi farm, Australis and Turner's Falls. They originally started out with hybrid striped bass as Aqua Future. They produce about 1,000 tons per year. And this is, I think, a, a, a freshwater production system. Next slide, please. And then in the United States, tilapia is the largest <coughs> volume of fish produced in closed containment systems. This is Blue Ridge, which is the largest tilapia producer in the United States at about four and a half million pounds a year. And tilapia has been one of the best things and the worst things for closed containment farming. It's the best because they've grown and they have an industry. It sells to the live market. One of the worst things is it, it's such a tough fish, it doesn't need good water quality. So the engineering design has deteriorated when this fish is dealt with because they don't need good design. Not like other fish, like salmon and trout. Next slide. And uh, another example of pilot scale of real commercial farms for closed containment is Aqua Seed Sweet Spring Coho Salmon. And Per Heglin, who let me use this slide, is here. Uh, and he's in Washington State producing Coho Salmon. And he's had some grow up uh, farmers working with him in Montana. So it's growing. I'm trying to show us this, this industry is growing, but we're right at the cusp. Next slide. Um, Right now, Atlantic salmon smoke, the, the fingerlings produced to put in the net pens are almost majority produced in closed containment systems in North America. Uh, so the salmon farmers know this technology well. Next slide. 